This is the plaintiff, Heriberto Palacio. He says the defendant is a friend of his and a single mother who didn't have a car. He wanted to help a fellow person in need and let the defendant use his car while he was out of town. Long story short, he still doesn't know where his car is, but did find out the defendant turned in his plates and the car marshal towed it. He has no idea what the defendant's problem is, but does know one thing. He's suing for the $5,000 he's owed. This is the defendant, Erin. She says she paid the plaintiff a hundred bucks to use his jalopy while he was out of town. Two days later, the car started smoking. Then it overheated, smack in the middle of the Holland Tunnel. She told the plaintiff she brought the car to a mechanic. Told him he was now responsible for retrieving it. And now he's suing her? Ha! She's accused of letting down a friend. All parties, please raise your right hand. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff wanted to help the defendant out, so he loaned her his car. And now that car is missing. She says it broke down in the Holland Tunnel and she was nice enough to take it to a mechanic. After that, it's his problem. It's the case of, I broke down in Holland. Thank you, Douglas. Okay, Ediberto Palacio, you are suing Aaron. You've asked us just to call you by the name Aaron? Yes. Okay. For <laughs> Is that a name of yours or you just put it? on name. Okay. Oh, Okay. Uh, for $5,000, according to you, you're at actually more than that, but that's a statutory limit in New York. For damages to your vehicle that was in her care, tell me what's going on. Well, Your Honor, I never, I would say it wasn't damages. I never received the vehicle back, so there's no damages. I, I didn't get it Okay, back so at all. loss that you, and you say that's her fault. The vehicle and the property within was all lost. It was never returned to okay, me. Okay, tell me what happened. I was going to Georgia to work. Mm-hmm. And for approximately 30 days, she asked if she could How borrow. How do you know her? I know her. We met while I was, I'm a general contractor. And I, one of her, her former employers was my client. Uh, we became friends. And she asked to borrow the car. And I let her borrow it while I was going for a month. Friends, <laughs> friends, or? Just regular friends. Friends, friends. Okay. And so go on. And... Wait, why don't I have any friends like that? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> and what were the terms of her using it? Nothing? You're just being nice? Uh, she has a boyfriend that is um, lives up by Canada, about 300 miles away, and I didn't want her to go there, and okay. I, didn't want, I didn't want anything to happen with the vehicle, and I didn't want her to be in any jeopardy or the vehicle to be in any jeopardy. <laughs> so you wanted it nice and safe in New York City? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, gotcha. All right, so what happens? You now have the car and what goes wrong? I had the car, um, I drove around with him all day. I dropped him off, he left in the U-Haul truck to go to Georgia. Um, I drove the car home to the Bronx. Saturday, I drove to a birthday party of my um, little baby cousins. I had my daughter in the car with me. Um, when we were coming home, like about 11.30, the car is smoking, like um, the FDR. Okay, come on up. <clears throat> and so you had the car one day? Well, I had it from Thursday, so that went to the party on Saturday. I didn't drive it on um, Friday, just on Saturday. I was in the house. Okay. So um, the car's smoking. I'm freaking out. I'm calling him. He didn't pick up the phone. Um, I'm calling my best friend, and I'm like, this car is smoking. I don't know what to do. So I pulled over to the shoulder, and um, when I called her, she's like, well, where are you? Her and her fiancé were driving to Long Island, and they just came out there. Where was it that you were that you had pulled over? Right on the shoulder of the FDR by um, the water club. On yeah, by Street. the water club over there. Okay. When you got there, what'd you see? When I got there, the hood was up. <clears throat> there was smoke. Apparently looked like, I'm not a mechanic, but I know a little bit about cars. The cap on the antifreeze while she was driving, the water elevated and it flew off. And that's what caused smoke to the car, the okay. radiator. There was lack of antifreeze. Go ahead. So, um, you know, they came, they put the antifreeze in there <clears throat> and... We're like, okay, she's like, we're gonna follow you home. They followed me all the way to the Bronx. Everything was good. You know, they left. The next day, I drove down to Canal Street. Then when I was going to go on the uh, West Side Highway, I got to the Holland Tunnel entrance and the car again. It's like overheating. And I was calling him, because then it started making like this loud grinding noise. At it's, this point, you are where now? 
on Greenwich Street. Okay. So I'm talking to him and I'm asking him, you know, he's, you know, what could be wrong with the car or whatever. He said he, he didn't put oil in it for the past two years. Um, he said that he's not for sure. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to wait till somebody moves out of this parking, you know, and then I'll turn it back on and I'll park in there, which I did. So then I took a cab to a um, gas station. I got three quarts of gas of oil and I poured them in there. I sat there like 10 minutes. So, you know, to see if it would get in there, the oil. So then I started it. Get and I'm still there. making the grinding, <laughs> right? <laughs> making the grinding noise. And I told him, I don't know what to do. And he's like, well, try to drive it. I said, okay, I'm gonna try to drive it up to 24th Street because where I got the, the um, oil initially. Oh my mechanic. gosh, lay this egg already, will you? Okay. <laughs> Where did you end up leaving the On car? 24th Street at the mechanic. Why didn't you drive it to where he was at? You were asking her to drive it to a friend's lot yes. on 137. Yes. How far away is 137? It's in Harlem, and okay. I was all the way downtown. Like so by what, the 20 minutes? But that car wouldn't have made it. Now, are you telling him this from the beginning? The car's there and that's where I'm leaving it and tough things? No, I told him I was going to take it there. He said, okay, take it there. See what they tell you is wrong with it. Right. I said, okay, but I'm leaving it because I can't do anything else with it. I got to go get my daughter from school. He goes, okay. Okay, so then they tell you that it needs what? The place that she said she left it at was not a general mechanic. They were not open to the public. And the, the guy said that she parked it outside on the street. Well, did it get towed? I believe so. She well, did, why didn't you just check? She, they, you can check that. And I called the marshals and all the marshals were telling me they didn't have it. That they didn't tow it. Right. I don't know what happened to the car. <clears throat> when you left the, the car, car at the place weeks. you say you left the car, did you have any, get any paperwork from them? They gave me a card. That's it. <laughs> and I have the address of it right here. I, I sent them an email with the address of it. You know, you know, I, Who, I'm who'd you leave it with? Now I don't know his, remember his name. Okay. Show me the email. It's an email she sends on June 4th. Eddie, as per your request, I dropped off your Dodge Intrepid at the mechanic at West 25th Street for it to be evaluated. I will check on it for you since you're out of town in Atlanta to let you know how much they will charge you. Then you answer her the next day. I never requested you drop off my vehicle anywhere except for my friend's lot on 137th <clears throat> Street. You agreed to be responsible for the vehicle when I asked you to hold it. I'm not asking you to get it fixed. I'm asking you to take it to 137th where it'll be safe. And you answer him. Contact your peoples in 137th and, wow, this is worse than my teenager. L Let me know. I know. I got it. Watch this. <laughs> okay? Watch this. Everything is an abbreviation. Everything is a... <laughs> Let me know when they are available for it to be dropped off. Harassing a single mother but it's all good. God will take care of you. What the heck does that mean? <laughs> because he was single. You knew, when nobody's ever supposed to do anything that bothers you because you're a single mother, no. what the deal was with your car and you trying to pin it on me? And please just let me know when they're available. Don't continue to harass me or threaten me. What are you talking about? Because he said legal action? No. See, I had a problem with my other phone, so I don't have a lot of the text messages that he sent me. Okay. Or I will be forced to take out an order of protection. I know your past and I have a child to think about. I can read between the lines. I do not want to be hurt by you. Why did he even say that? He didn't say anything about hurting you. He talked about- He didn't say it in the emails and he said it verbally. Then you answer her. He is expecting you uh, nine, anytime after 9 a.m. Please call first. Did you ever do that? I found out it was $130 to go, but I couldn't do it. So it was a $130 problem. Now it becomes a $5,000 problem because the car is missing. Did you ever go back to the place and say, hey, where the heck's the car? After he started harassing me. Did you park me? it on the street or did you park it I inside? I parked it inside. Because that's not what they're telling you, right? The guy said that it was told it was parked illegally. That, that's who the, the, the guy who she said she left it with. She says they never accepted any vehicle because they don't do it. He said that she left it on the street. They know she parked it on the street? Right. Okay, so they know she exists. They know there's, that there's a car. They know that this is their business and they took a key. He said that she came and being that he said that they don't do work on private vehicles. They said that they have. How did you pick them? 
because the car was overheating, the gas station told me there was a mechanic right on the tw on 25th Street. I went, I spoke to him, I parked it on the side with the hazards on. I went inside, I spoke to the man. He said to give the keys and my name and number to the lady that's sitting down. After that, they called me. They told me that it was a busted water pump and the timing belt was broken and it was what $600. Kind of car was for a Dodge, Dodge and Trapped, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. What year? Your Honor, may I ask a what question? Year? 99. She saved all of this information between me and her going back and forth, and I notified her that this would become a legal issue. If she dropped my vehicle off at the this place that she says, which I honestly don't believe exists, if she did and she left them, left something, she should be able to produce some type of documentation. But the problem is that it doesn't mean she's a liar. She could just not be very bright. Leaving a car or both with a stranger. Or both. It's a little bit crazy. Here's what you don't have to do. You don't have to pay to fix a guy's car that you're borrowing, but you do have a responsibility to make sure it's safe. When he does come up from Georgia to try to get the car, he's out of gas because he can't prove the car was there because you didn't get anything. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Courts in recess. All right. So she's got a million excuses. Nobody can find the car. Is she responsible? Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, it was her responsibility. As long as she was using it, that was her responsibility to take care of it. She says she took it to a mechanic and the, must have gotten lost there. That doesn't matter. It's in her possession. It's her responsibility. Okay, fair enough. Going inside the courtroom. I have a question. When did you hand over the car? May. I May what? I believe it was the 27th. And you say that you took the car when? It's the, um, the 17th, May 17th. You have the theory that the thing got towed because it only had one plate. He said that it only had one plate on it. And if I got any tickets on it, that he was gonna be responsible for it. Cause he knowingly took the other plate to Georgia and put it on another car. How many tickets did you get on the car? Well, I had it, just one. Really? Cause I see a ticket for May 17th when you got it for front or back plate missing. <clears throat> May 28th, front or back plate missing. This is when you have it. May 31st, front or back plate missing. And June 5th, no standing exec truck loading. That's probably when they towed it. That's when it broke down. They, they have no record of towing it. I checked New York City. They do have a record of $1,700 worth of tickets on it. At this point, yes. yeah. No, no, not just at this point. I just named the ones that are hers. You had an outstanding ticket in February, February, March, 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 April, totaling well over what it takes to get towed. Here's what we've got in the books. We have somebody who loans somebody a car, whether it's for a hundred bucks or doesn't, isn't for a hundred bucks is of no moment. We have somebody who, who <coughs> hands you over a car. If you did not want to drive it, it behooved you to find the 130 bucks and tow it. Because I would just hold you liable for 130 bucks if that were the case. But what you did was so much worse. She is deliberately indifferent. Yes, that's a very good way to put it. So why are you loaning her a car? I'm finding her legally responsible, but the only thing I can ever ask from a litigant is that they learn something from their behavior. Because you picked the wrong person, apparently, because she didn't come that way overnight. That's exactly how she was beforehand. So think the next time, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right, I'm giving him the blue book value of the car. I'm also giving him the value of the tickets that you got while the car was in your care, according to your ticket. admission. I only got one ticket. Oh, sweetheart, I see that you got tickets on May 28th. Okay, so I'm ordering you to pay those, which are five hundred and thirty dollars and fifty two cents plus one. You be quiet. This isn't your case. Plus one thousand seven hundred and forty seven dollars in the blue book value of the car, which I find is lost due to your negligence. And I'm ordering a judgment in favor of the plaintiff in the amount of two thousand two hundred and seventy seven dollars and fifty two cents. So the defendants out here after losing this case, come on in here. What's uh, what's your reaction to this verdict here? I'm just. <laughs> he tried to help you with the car when you needed something, right? Why do you think he loaned you that car? Because he needed the money, the hundred dollars. Because he didn't have any money. He didn't have no money to go to Georgia. He didn't have any money to take care of his car. He's just broke, and that's the whole purpose why I'm here. Because what, what he's did you to have get to get money out of me? What did you have to say at the end of the case that was so important? Well, he knew he was lending her a car with one plate on it. He knew he was taking that other plate to Georgia. So he knew that it would incur tickets. And he said he would absorb those tickets. All right, just right around the corner, right this way. Thank you. See Officer McIntosh. All right, so come on in here. Uh, you learned a lesson here? 
Yes, people lie in an incredible way. <laughs> She's one of the greatest liars I've ever met. So why'd you lend her a card then? <laughs> Just to be nice? Trying to be nice, yeah. Harvey? Okay, in the law, this is called a loan for use, which means if you borrow something from somebody and, and you're not paying them anything for it, uh, you have to use great care to preserve that property and protect it from damage or loss. And that basically means if it gets lost or damaged, you're gonna be responsible. That will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.